What is up everyone, Steven here, and I now have thermal results for the SX8200 with and without the included heatsink. For those of you who are a bit out of the loop, here's a brief summary. I got a comment on the unboxing video from someone who found that the heatsink actually increased temperatures in their MacBook Pro by a large margin. So I wanted to test it in my desktop and see if the same held true for a fairly typical desktop setup but I wasn't able to do it for the full review because it looked like the heatsink would have been a real pain to get off and would have involved destroying the heatsink. I didn't really want to do that. But just recently, I got my brother the smaller version of the same model as a little birthday present. So I initially installed the drive in his system without the heatsink, and then later I did some testing, measured the temperatures in various situations, then installed the heatsink, repeated the tests, and now I have some results to compare. But before we look at the actual results, let's just briefly talk about the test setup. It is my brother's drive, so it was tested in his system, not mine. It's pretty similar, but there are some important differences, mainly to do with the M.2 slot location and CPU cooler design. First, the M.2 slot is above the highest PCIe X16 slot, meaning that his drive is above his graphics card instead of under it like it is on my board. Also, while he has a less powerful CPU, he also has a different CPU cooler design. I have a large tower cooler that directs air towards the rear case fan, but he has an AMD Wraith Stealth cooler, that's the stock cooler, that directs air downward towards the motherboard to the sides of the CPU. In theory, this should make his drive respond more to high CPU temperatures. But first, let's an answer the important question. In my brother's computer, the heatsink does, in fact, lower temperatures significantly. Certainly more than I expected, but perhaps an even more interesting difference lies in my drive's higher idle and load temperatures. As it turns out, a dual slot and dual fan graphics card sitting right on top of the drive will end up blocking a lot of the airflow that might otherwise cool down the drive. What a twist! This is simply a consequence of his motherboard design, and it actually gives me yet another reason to <laughs> prefer his board over my own. And although my testing doesn't really reveal any other interesting insights into the heatsink itself, it does reveal some interesting things about the general impact of airflow and drive position on temperatures. Some things to keep in mind, eh? As it turns out, due to the motherboard and CPU cooler design, his drive is more responsive to CPU temperatures, although it still doesn't get as hot as my drive does on its own. You might be a bit surprised to see that my drive is a bit cooler when the CPU is stressed, but it actually makes perfect sense, because I have my motherboard set to increase the case fan speed as my CPU temperature increases. So while the graphics card isolates the drive from the CPU's hot air, the case fans push more air through the case and dissipate heat from the drive faster. His case fans, on the other hand, are controlled with some sliders at the front of the case, and were left on minimum speed for all these tests. We see a similar story with GPU temperatures. Both drives are close enough to get some heat from the graphics card, although in his case, the graphics card PCB blocks the airflow from the GPU fans, so it's hotter across the board. On my card, under a GPU load, the fans create enough additional airflow to slightly reduce temperatures when the drive is also stressed. So based on my testing, I'm pretty comfortable in saying that the included heatsink will probably help if it's going to be used in a desktop with decent airflow. But if it's going in a low airflow compact build, such as a laptop, your mileage may vary. And if you are in a low airflow environment, you might want to test it yourself or just run it without the heatsink. So that's pretty much it. As always, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe as you see fit. And of course, have yourself a Merry Christmas. Thanks for watching and I'll figuratively see you in 2019.